Dalton Akron's uh, well, what a great player. story, you know, to have a national championship team have five players selected first round. It's the first time we've ever had that happen in our league's history. Kudos to uh, Caleb and uh, the great program that he's put together. You know, part of the story for us, Stephen, is that uh, there's not just room for college soccer, but college soccer plays an important role in the, the development of uh, professional players. And you know, look at some of the terrific players that have come out of our league from the beginning, you know, whether it's Clint Dempsey, who's playing at an incredibly high level, uh, to Tim Ream, who's doing extraordinarily well, and Omar Gonzalez. Uh, college is still developing a lot of players and developing quickly and able to make an impact. That's why our draft is very important and relevant. Yeah, you know, listen, it's a, what a, when you tweet yourself as opposed to having others do it for you, those things happen. So I meant to have that tweet sent uh, second, and I didn't tweet the first round uh, selection. So it got confused in the excitement, but I, I'm humble enough to know I'm not perfect, and it's a story of cyberspace. You know, you, uh, you have to recognize that you got to be careful. But I'm not, I'm okay with it. I'm sure you guys will have fun with it, but yes. shows them human, right? Commissioner, um, state of Maryland did a hundred thousand dollar study, feasibility study, of building a soccer stadium for an MLS team. Um, maybe DC United, if they can't get a stadium deal done down there, is this a viable market you think for an MLS team? Yeah, it absolutely is. I mean, I, the team is called DC United. And they've been down there obviously since the league's inception. Uh, they don't have a stadium solution; they need one. They've had very positive discussions here in uh, in Baltimore. Uh, uh, and if these guys can uh, deliver the right kind of facility, I'm sure Will Chang uh, and Kevin Payne will look hard at uh, a potential stadium solution. They must have a solution because what they have right now is not working. We've been saying that for years, and at some point it's going to reach the breaking point. I'm not saying that's happening tomorrow, but it will happen at some point. You know, we've got to work hard uh, to find a, uh, an alternative to what uh, is now, which is no alternative down in D.C. So this would be a viable option? I absolutely believe it would be a viable option. I look at the success of the teams up here in this market. It's certainly close enough to D.C. so they're not totally displacing their fan base. Uh, it's a good market. I want to mention you how important it was in Toronto that you were about a month out from sort of finalizing the, the playoff format and the competition We're days, days uh, shortly. We'll be able to finalize it shortly. Can you sort of give us an indication of where you're leading? really. You know, we've got a lot of work to do. And, so many things that still need to be put into place, not the least of which is finalizing some television negotiations. You know, we've got out our opening dates and we've got out some other key dates for our club. And we hope to have something as well. Committed, still committed to the 10 teams as a single elimination you know, we're, bracket. We're, we're, we're commit we believe that, uh, though some of our fans don't agree with it, we believe that this playoff game is going to be exciting. And uh, we can work to find ways to ensure that our regular season is more and more relevant. And adding a playing game is not going to take away from that. We actually think it's going to add to it. Uh, so we, we believe it'll be exciting, but it's going to be part of a broader picture in terms of how we will resolve our play. Uh, you mentioned you may, I don't know, I mean, how close are you in terms of weeks away? No, I meant uh, television. In terms of broadcast. You know, it's uh, something we hope to have resolved at now, Brian. It's not resolved yet. Uh, we're still working on it. Uh, there are a lot of moving pieces, uh, and we hope to get something that uh, gets resolved, I'd say, in the next 30 days or so. But it's not there yet. We're not able to reach an agreement uh, with a, a very, very uh, good partner of ours, and, and we disagree in a number of different areas. I've got great respect for them, both at the management level, but also what they've done. But we've got to ensure that we come up with a, uh, a package that makes sense for us in the uh, Long term, and right now we're not there yet, but uh, we'll continue working together to try to get there. I know Fox wants to be with Major League Soccer, and we want to be with Fox. Are you further away than you were? No, a month ago? I mean, no. these things are always like this, having done lots of them. You mentioned how important college soccer was, and yet you brought back the reserve league. Do they correlate in any way, or, and how much do you push for the reserve? You know, I think it's a combination of a lot of different things. Uh, like you can't just depend on the development system in our academies. You can't just depend on college soccer, which is what we've done in the past. Uh, we've recognized we need more and more opportunities for those kids we bring in at either level, academy or the college level, to play. And that's what the reserve league uh, division is all about. We're going to bring players in and expand our rosters. Let's put them in a very competitive environment. 
and we hope to see that preserve. Uh, we're going to put resources against that that are just far greater than it was in the first generation. Was it a big mistake to let it go? I think it was a mistake. It wasn't working. We didn't have enough players. You know, we had you know, so many of people playing in our reserve. That wasn't right. And again, it's part of my comment to Steve about tweeting. You know, we got to be big enough to recognize that not every decision we're going to make immediately is going to be right. We got to have the courage to change it and make tough decisions if it means delays or going in a hiatus, whether it's with TV partners or it's with you know competitive decisions we make. We got to recognize we're still in a development phase in the lifespan of our league. In the wake of the World Cup decision, where do you stand? on the commitment you made to, you know, looking at the, we still, the new season, the winter season? Well, <laughs> uh, we'll revisit the whole decision on moving our schedule. Right now, I think the whole schedule thing is upside down. It's, just, uh, it's certainly up in the air. Okay. And right now, uh, FIFA's talking about a winter World Cup. Yep. Mm -hmm. So maybe the, maybe the season we have is right. So I think we'll probably take a deep breath and uh, put that concept on the back burner. Do you, do you look at that as money well spent? The, 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 the money you contributed yeah. to the bid process and all that? Yeah, the time we spent, the money we spent. Yeah, so we had to give it our best shot. We gave it our best shot. We left nothing on the field. I wouldn't do anything any different. I think we were fighting, you know, a very, very tough fight against a, an opponent that wanted to win at all costs, and they won, and uh, I hope it's best for the sport. Why well, they won at all costs, perhaps? What's that? They won at all costs, perhaps. I mean, they did whatever they needed to do to win, and I admire them for that. Hopefully, you know, the, de the decisions that uh, the, the sport that FIFA made, uh, I hope turns out to be in the best interest of the sport. It's certainly frustrating for us, and one that will make it... Uh, harder for us to achieve our goals in the time period we'd hope to. It just means we got to work harder and recognize that it's going to be easy. We were talking about the Reserve League. With that and the academy system and the way that player development track is growing, is there a chance that that lessens the relevance of college soccer and perhaps this draft as the sport of spectacle that it's become? How do you prefer that? I, I, don't, I don't agree at all. I mean, you look at some of the best players in our league last year came from college. Tim Ream right now, or his agent, you're feeling pretty good, or Omar's agent. So college soccer is still producing the majority of the best young players in our in our league. The question is, how can we get them earlier? Not in replacement, but how can we get them earlier? And if we can get players like Dallas to sign their fifth player, we can get players that are coming in at 16, 17, 18. We also get players that are coming in at 19, 20, 21. That's going to allow us to capture a larger swaths of young players phase in the soccer movement in America to be sure we're capturing as many players as we can. You might have to both of you talked about how they were viable partners. Um, are you any closer in, I guess, narrowing down or filtering out all of these supposed suitors or potential buyers for a second New York team, whether that be the Will Ponds or whether that be the Cosmos? Or we're still in discussions with a wide variety of potential investors in New York. That 2018 is a real priority just intrigued by what uh, Paul Kelmsley and his partners have done with the Cosmos. I'm impressed by it. They've made a lot of really good decisions. They're serious, very, very serious guys. They're putting together uh, investors that uh, perhaps can give them the wherewithal to build a state-of-the-art facility that would be appropriate for the tri-state area. And we'll continue our discussions with them as well. But uh, we're making progress in the New York area. And we feel pretty good about the prospects. Would it be fair for me to describe if that group was one entity and the Mets or Wilpons were another entity that were competitors? Is it fair for me to describe them as now closer to being a partnership than no, com not competitors? Or no, the thing, great thing still about New York is that the economy improves. There's no shortage of people that money that are interested in right. soccer, particularly in the financial markets. Younger guys that have play the game or the kids that play. So one of the great things about our sport is that people that are growing up with the game are now influencing lots of things that go on in business and in society. And they're the guys that are potential investors for us. So whether it's Cosmos, whether it's uh, continuing our discussions with the Mets, or it's the no shortage of guys that are in the investment community. You said about TV negotiation. Uh, other than Versus, do you uh, have any other interest from the t uh, national TV stations? Uh, well, there, 
it's, it, it's not appropriate for me to talk about it all publicly. I'll say that we are confident that whatever we end up, whatever decision we end up making for 2011, mm -hmm. we are a good decision for our league, and ultimately it will be the right decision for our business. So. Um, we're, we're not without suitors. Uh, we have to be sure that we make the right decision, short and long term. Yeah, and, and, and then short and long term, uh, you, you, your goal would be exposure right now or a financial benefit? You no, know, right? it's always both. It's always both. I mean, you got to continue to improve and invest in our product. That requires increasing our revenue base. So either we ask our investors for more money or we try to go out and build a real business for them. And that business is going to be driven by television revenues, Sponsorship revenue and gate. We're trying to continue as we have been, move that needle, move that uh, that business, that aspect of our business um, higher and higher, and that's our, our, our goal and our objective. And, and so far, we've been able to do that. We want to continue that trend. Guys, if we can finish up with two more questions, questions, because we have players coming. Oh, the numbers that may have been met, that have been mentioned in the Wall Street Journal and sports business. I mean, are those? Did you consider increasing salary cap a little bit, at least? We did increase the salary about a lot this year. <laughs> Paul, can you speak of the South American issue two first round picks today, and also a long term issue of a homegrown event like this for, the, for those kids? Good question. We got a, a bunch of guys now that uh, you might want to talk to. Go talk to Alejandro Tarachu, who's here, who interned in our office, um, got an uh, MBA from NYU didn't speak a whole lot of English, worked for Ivan and Todd, and now he's based in Buenos Aires, and he's ended up getting, he got us Juan Pablo, he got us Freddy Montero, he got us these three guys, obviously he got us uh, uh, Guillermo. We, we have a hotbed of interest in our league down in South America, and it's driven by us putting people on the ground there. We're moving somebody to Mexico this year, we're going to put somebody in Brazil, we just hired somebody to represent us in Asia, and it's a resource for our clubs to go out and have scouts that are working for us. So if we can do it in Argentina, imagine what we'll be able to do in Africa and other parts of the world. It's a great development that all you guys are so close to us. How many people think about the negative things that go on with Major League Soccer? This is an incredibly positive development. Lots of money going into that. That's why we need more revenues, or else it's just investing for people yeah. that may not happen in time for to happen. In Africa, I mean, I know I've met him. Yeah, yes, Africa, Africa is very, is very much on the radar. Yeah. Uh, very much on the radar. Africa. Brazil, Africa, Asia, somebody now based in Japan. Well, you do have, you have, we have, have somebody them. down representing us in Japan and Mexico. So you presently have a guy in Asia. Argentina, Asia, Asia Mexico, and Japan. And Africa is coming along with Brazil. We don't know yet.